This is a fractional equation, but it contains multiple terms. You see the x over 2 is one term, the negative 1 third is one term, and on the right we have one big term, 4x minus 5 over 6. These are a little bit more difficult, but we have a technique for solving these that will work every time. We can make the problem simpler by getting rid of all the fractions, and sometimes this is called clearing the fractions. We clear out all the fractions from the equation. And here's how we do it. Just look at the denominators, a 2, a 3, and a 6. Find the least common denominator, and if you multiply by that, all the fractions will disappear every single time. You can clear an equation of fractions by multiplying by the least common denominator. And the, the least common denominator here is 6, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 6. Now over here on the right, I multiply by 6, and it's pretty easy to see that that's 6 over 1. That's what that 6 means, and you can even write it that way if you want to. But whether or not you put the over 1 there or not, that 6 cancels out. And the right side just becomes 4x minus 5. Now if I've multiplied the right side by 6, I have to multiply the left side by 6. So I'm going to put a 6 over here. But think now, you have to have parentheses right there. And the reason is because without the parentheses, this just looks like you're doing 6 times x over 2. And that's not right. You multiplied the right side of the equation here by 6. And whatever you do on one side, you do on the other side of the equation. So we multiply the entire left side by 6. And that means we need to distribute. This 6 is going to get distributed to the x over 2 term and to the negative 1 third term. So the left side becomes this. 6 times x over 2 and 6 times 1 over 3. The 6 has been multiplied by my x over 2 and by my 1 third and my minus sign stays in there. On the right side over here, after those 6's cancel, I'm just left with 4x minus 5. Now, I said that multiplying by 6 would get rid of all the fractions, and we see that happen here. On the left, the 6 and the 2 reduce. That just becomes a 3. And the 3 and the 6 reduce, and that just becomes a 2. So the left side of the equation is now 3x minus 2, and the right side is 4x minus 5. Now we still have not solved this, but we've made the equation simpler by clearing out all the fractions. Now we need to finish solving this. I notice I have a x over here, really a 3x, but there is an x on the left side and on the right over here in this 4x term. So I need to get rid of one of those. I'm trying to isolate x. That means I need to get x by itself in one place. I can't have an x on both sides. So I'm going to get rid of the 3x. I'm going to subtract 3x from the left. And if I subtract 3x from the left, I have to subtract 3x from the right. So the left side is now 3x minus 2 minus 3x. And the 3x and the minus 3x will cancel each other out. That leaves me with a minus 2 on the left side of the equal sign. On the right, I have 4x minus 5 minus 3x. And this 4x minus 3x leaves me simply with x. And I still have this minus 5. So I write that in. I have x minus 5. Now, my, I'm, I'm still not done, but the equation I have now is a lot simpler than my original equation. And as you work your problem through step by step, each step should result in it getting a little bit simpler. You can see right now I have x minus 5 on the right. I can get x by itself if I simply add 5. And if I add 5 on the right, I have to add 5 on the left. On the right, the minus 5 and the plus 5 cancel each other out, leaving me with x all by itself. And that was my goal. I can now say x equals whatever I have over here, negative 2 plus 5. And negative 2 plus 5 is 3, so that's my answer. x equals 3.